guys, Kelly Walters here. Before we get started talking about bags in this playbook series, I am going to give it just a couple of um, seconds, okay, probably a minute or so to allow people to adjust from one um, class to this, to this class. So hold tight. Um, hello, hello. Thanks for attending the Heat Press for Profit event with us. Um, our second event, it's getting really exciting as we start developing these more and more. Hopefully you've enjoyed everybody's classes and we are still going to keep rocking through the evening and of course all day tomorrow. If you have any questions, make sure you pop them in the comment section through the pathable link. That way Shauna can either respond to them or make sure that she's asking them that way everybody else can hear and then I can answer them for you. And of course, um, make sure you check out the event specials, which are going to be at the top uh, right hand of the entire website. It should be listed in blue that says event specials. And then of course you can download this presentation in a PDF format in the files right here in this education class. And um, I'm thinking we're going to get started. I'm checking the time. Well, maybe wait, just, just a smidge more. I know it's sometimes you have to refresh and then we'll just get rocking and rolling. If you don't know what class this is, we're going to be going over bags. We are going to show some good, better, best options and use three different types of vinyl on each bag while hitting three completely different markets. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to share my screen, show the presentation, and we are going to review bags, show you what we're decorating that way. You guys can have the item numbers. I know that has been a really, really big popular question. And my animal is going absolutely crazy. Okay. Well, nothing like being live and, um, you know, craziness happening. So now on to it. Let's go to that presentation. After that, we'll decorate and then we will review some pricing. Um, that way you guys can really associate what the cost is with, to decorate these bags and what cost um, you should be able to get for them. So like I said, this is the ultimate playbook and we are reviewing bags and totes. So the backpack, the bag, the tote, whatever you want to call it, it really is the ultimate accessory. With hundreds of styles available, there is a bag for every type of customer. Bags are a great accessory cell that can be packaged with a t-shirt, jacket, etc. for really any client. Even when it comes down to bags, you should almost look at your orders as a good, better, best as well. Good being one item, better being two. Best would give you the ability to really offer that full package for your customers. So think of wardrobing them. That could be the jacket, the shirt, and then you're adding on a hat and a bag. Why heat printing? Why are we looking at heat printing bags over using a different type of method? So in comparison to other print technologies like screen printing or embroidery, heat printing bags can be a very profitable opportunity for you. One, the ease and speed of loading on a press equals more pieces per hour. If you guys just attended Mark's class, you heard him talk about um, the potential of embroidering 270 degrees versus 360. And then if you are embroidering 270 degrees on each location, you're going to have to hoop, unhoop, and hoop again. So think of that exact same thing as the backpack or the bag, I keep calling it a backpack, but that's just what keeps coming to my mind. So the front pocket, the strap, the upper pocket that may hold some sunglasses, all of those are going to be different locations which you would have to hoop or find a way to screen print. Second, a variety of materials offered to help with troublesome fabrics. Cough, cough, neon, neon, nylon, um, and then of course, really, really slinky materials that you might find with a cinch sack. 
Third, it opens doors to a variety of decorating locations, like talked about in the first one, increasing the overall price point. So location, location, location. If you are decorating three different locations, all of those should have a cost added into the overall price. Fourth, the ability to use a single color, multicolor, or add dimension or texture. All of those are products that you can find um, or offerings that you can find when it comes to heat printing. Guys, I'm timing myself to make sure we stay on track. So if you hear this go off, that is why. All right, so popular styles. If you guys are new to bags or you're just not quite sure the markets that are out there or really who's going to be using what, the cinch sack can be used for a variety of things when it comes down to events, sports, kids, schools. Um, they are also great little gifting if you are doing anything, uh, you know, gifting for the corporate world. Tote bags, that can also include a computer tote as well as a tote that you would use at the grocery store. Travel or athletic typically includes a backpack or a duffel bag, can also include a roller bag. And then you have retail. Now, this specifically is another tote bag, but in retail, you can still get a retail inspired backpack or hit a variety of different styles, but there's typically trending aspects that you would find in retail um, that you would either sell to your customer or you would offer to places that cater to like a boutique or an e-commerce boutique. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna dive right in to what we are decorating that we're gonna go off of this presentation and we're gonna actually go straight to uh, heat applying and then we will re review a lot of the details after. So in this particular case, you can see we are going to be decorating a tote bag. Right there, you can see it's called the recycled zipper tote. There's your item number and where it is from. For this product for decoration, we will be using CAD Cut Fashion Film Electric. And I have also added the cost of this bag. So this bag without the logo is $3.59. Now, if you're returning to this presentation after we are done, maybe you're saving all of the PDFs for uh, training purposes. You can also see that there is the time temperature pressure down at the lower left-hand side. And of course, tips to consider when decorating on bags. The second bag we are going to decorate is, ooh, too fast, it is the uh, travel bag. This is called the commuter duffel. It is an OGO bag, and this was sourced from Sanmar. Now we are going to be taking a tonal aspect um, with just about, well, with all three bags. However, some are going to have a satin finish. This one will have a dimension added to it. And then our third will have a, um, a, a sheen to it. Now, as you can see, the cost of this bag is $45. If you are looking at this and you are going, oh my gosh, that is the cost of the bag. That's not even adding any type of market markup. Do not panic because I will um, hopefully have time to show you a very, very similar bag from OGO's website. Again, same thing for time temperature pressure right there. And then of course, the tips. The third bag we are going to be decorating is going to be the tote that is specific for retail. Now, this looks like a purse that you could go and purchase from Walmart, Target, Nordstrom. Um, I'm trying to think of really other popular places right now, but those three are just staying in my mind. Specifically being Target and Nordstrom. This has a faux leather look to it. Um, it is not a faux leather. It just looks and has that texture. We're decorating this with CAD cut metallic, giving it a branded or an initial look. And of course, you can see the time temperature pressure. And if you haven't read all of the tips from all three slides, they have um, a lot of similarities to them. 
Now, I just caught a typo in tip two, but the first tip is use a pillow to avoid seams and handles. We are actually going to be using a pad for all three products because of how thick the handles, the seams, the zippers are on all of these bags. This is going to allow the logo and the material to rise a little bit higher than the the straps and honestly with that $45 OGO bag, we want to keep it in pristine condition. Second is to be cautious of the texture of the bag. The last two, um, the first one is a uh, polyester. You can definitely see the fibers in that. The second one, which is the OGO bag has a really, really smooth surface. And this one also has a smooth surface. However, just keep in mind that the texture could change when heat applying. Third, endless opportunities for these materials. Everything that we are heat applying can use, I would say, 95% of the materials that we offer from a logo aspect, whether it is vinyl, whether it is a full color option, or even going into the emblems, which would be flex style and, um, you know, other patches. Kelly, yeah. some, of the part, some of the participants are having a difficult time hearing you. If you could no. just maybe speak a little louder. No. Uh. <laughs> okay. So we're going to do a quick, a quick test. Is this better? If I'll just, if I talk louder, I'll wait. <laughs> yeah. You guys tell me if this is easier. Yes, they think they're saying yes. Okay. So I'll just make sure I turn my cheerleader voice on and project and not be so quiet. So, um, okay, you guys, we are going to take away from or take off of this. Can't talk. We're going to stop sharing this PowerPoint. And we are going to move to heat decorating. To review all of the pricing, the good, better, best when it comes to offerings, logos, what you could really run with in terms of cost, I want you to see these completed because they're going to have a wow factor. And I always feel like if you add a wow factor in, then it always gives you the ability to add just a little bit more um, on your margin. So as you can see, I am using the Hottronics auto clam. I do have it on a tabletop stand right here. Now, with that being said, I have taken out the 16 by 20 platen and we are using the six by 10. So it's this guy right here. And then if need be, which I can tell you we will need, um, I will be using the four by six print perfect pad. Now, like I said, I am using this just because it's a little more dense. It's really going to raise some of those merchant, excuse me, drop some of those merchandising elements on that, on those bags. I just don't want the heat to interfere, interfere at all and um, really create a really pretty bag as much as best as possible. So the first one that we are going to be decorating is the tote bag. Now, this is much larger than what I was expecting, which is always a good thing. And you guys, I take that out because that's not, that's not going to work. So we're going to switch back. We are going to use the 11 by 15. going to rotate it horizontally and we're going to see if we can completely avoid using a pillow. So this is the graphic. This is fashion film electric and the particular color is olive. So as you're seeing right now, it kind of looks black. Maybe you can see the olive hue to it, but you'll really see it once we release this carrier. Now, the reason why Fashion Film Electric is a great choice is because you have a satin finish to it. But how Fashion Film Electric and, uh, excuse me, metallic differ is more of a pearl finish versus a metallic finish. You're still going to have um, those 
metallic like shimmer. And I, I use shimmer very, very loosely because it's not going to look like glitter flake. When the light hits it, hopefully you'll be able to see the aspects or the um, characteristics that I am talking about. Okay, so like I said, this is the tote bag we're using. There is no pocket on either side, so we don't need to worry about that. It's just nice and open. This is an excellent bag to use for a variety of customers, whether maybe you're going down grocery, maybe you're doing an event and people want to stuff their water bottle and t-shirt or all of their goodies inside. Um, if you are doing a trade show and I can already tell, oh, oh, nope. And you want them to be able to walk around with um, the customer's name on the outside. Awesome, look at that, you guys. So the 11 by 15 completely works and our seam is off. All right, so our heat press should be at 320. Now, because I'm going to be working with about a 30 degree difference in all of the materials, I'm only gonna be at 310. So if for some reason we have a peeling issue, then I will definitely go down heat apply again. Just please remember that Fashion Film Electric applies at 320 for 15 seconds. I was going to say 12, a medium pressure, which would be say a four to six. And it is going to be a hot peel. So as soon as that heating element comes up, we'll be able to remove the carrier right away. Okay, so first we are going to pre-press. There are a lot of um, wrinkles and creases in this bag. So we wanna make sure that we're starting out with a very, very clean finish. Surface, not finish. Now that I had everything adjusted for that six by 10, Let's do this. All right. So now that this is pre-pressing, once this pops open, I'm going to make sure that we are going to be good to go. And I'm thinking we're going to have to use a pillow no matter what. Yeah, we are. I tried. I was more worried about the larger bags with the small lo smaller logos than I was the big bag. And I definitely prepped for that. So no big deal. All right, so in this case, I am going to be using a printing pillow. Now we've already pre-pressed, so I am just going to slide this in there. And then because you have the seam, I am just going to fold it down and again, just create a really smooth surface. Now I am going to check my pressure one more time since we just completely adjusted everything that we were doing. As you're adding the pillow and you're adjusting the platen, it's going to completely adjust your pressure. So some of you guys have asked, um, you know, how important is it to have the pressure readout for me, it's extremely important because my, what I consider light, medium, and heavy might be completely different than what a pr different or other presenter does. Okay, so we're just gonna peel the backing off. And then I like to find the middle. So here we are, we're just going to crease. And again, this is a hot peel. And it's going to cook for 15 seconds. So once again, I will place my cover sheet over. And now we will uh, let her cook. 
So when we go over the pricing of this, I will also show you the cost of this transfer, as well as two other options. That way you can get an overview on different decoration methods that you could decorate on this bag and just kind of an idea. And of course, I'm gonna ask you what you would charge for it. So stay tuned for that question. You feel just fine. Test, test, we good? Okay, this is what it looks like completed. Now, those are not scorching marks. Those are marks from the pillow. And as they start to cool down, they will wear down as well. So as you can see, we have an awesome tone on tone effect. But when you get up close, and if it will allow, you can kind of see the sheen of the satin and then kind of that pearlized metallic or soft metallic kind of finish. So this is just a great, great option. Um, I really hope you guys run with this bag specifically when uh, customers are looking for totes. For three, 350, I thought this was an incredible option. Okay, we'll have Sally hold it. All right, up next is going to be the commu uh, commuter bag from OGO. Look, you guys, this is massive. Okay, so when I said don't freak over the $45 cost or who's going to buy that, it's because this isn't just a duffel bag. This is a bag that you take on a trip, okay? It is padded, there's pockets, there's storage compartments. This is an incredible option to a um, rolling bag. And you almost have a, it's a polyester outside, but it almost feels like a soft shell style of a jacket. So very, very, very elevated bag. And this of course would be a best when it comes to offering. Now we are doing a tonal. This one will have initials. Let me see that I can get this guy back. There we go. Bear with me. All right, now we're ready to rock and roll again. So I have switched back to the six by 10 platen, and then we are going to turn around and use our pad. The reason being is that there are a lot of merchandising elements going on right here. We've got a pocket within three other pockets. We've got braiding, we've got straps, and we have a zipper. So what I'm gonna do first is still thread this. I'm adjusting my time to 300 degrees and soft foam applies for 15 seconds at a light to medium. So three, four range in terms of pressure. And then it is a cold peel. So I'm gonna make sure that it's cool to the touch before we peel that carrier away. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is um, get this situated. And I am going to do a corner placement so I want our JSR to go right here on the edge versus the center or even the middle of the bag. Now this is the color soft, or excuse me, it's black in the material soft foam. This is gonna give us dimension. It's gonna give us that really, really soft hand. And it's also gonna provide a soft matte look to it. So while we are going to be um, pretty much tonal, that raised uh, type of material is gonna help complement that nice black OGO emblem that is right at the center. So I'm going to peel this off and now I'm going to grab my pad and I recommend putting your pad in there prior to going to the, the heating element just to avoid any type of, you know, burns. 
but here I am. <laughs> okay, so we are going to pre-press to make sure we've got everything correct in terms of pressure and read out. So I'm gonna readjust that. Nope. Now remember the pad has absolutely no give in it. So whatever you are getting in terms of pressure, it's not going to adjust as that pad collapses. It's not going to collapse, it will stay that way. So here is our logo. We'll see if you guys can see that. It's got some good dimension. I know we've been using soft foam in several of our uh, decoration methods and it's because it's a, I mean, it's really an excellent material and it's very, very lightweight, not adding any other weight to an already heavy bag. All right, so she's gonna cook 15 seconds and we are reading at a low pressure. So when this Kelly, pops, yeah, go for it. Question. Yeah. Shauna Ray asks on the print for the tote, is that print material something we design and print ourselves or only through custom design through you guys? Excellent question. So specifically that material is called CAD cut, which is our vinyl. So that means that you can order in a couple of different ways. You can order in a roll. So you would get the roll, like you can see right here. If you are using a craft cutter, then you would trim down your material to fit for that cutter. Or you would, if you're using an industrial, something that takes the roll, just keep it with the roll. So that would be your first option would be you designing at home, decorating, cutting, all of that in your facility. The second option would be ordering through services. So if you don't have the ability to cut, then you can upload your design or you can design in a couple of different platforms from us. And then we will cut weed and send it to you just like you saw. So hopefully that answers it without, um, it was a fast answer. <laughs> Let me know if it doesn't answer though. I'm happy to elaborate just a little bit more. Okay, up next, this is the tote. So it's very, very stiff. This is not canvas. Um, like I said, it, it mimics faux leather, but like this, as you can see, is pretty stiff, right? So this is really important on making sure that you get the logo where you want it. We're gonna go center middle for this. And with that, I don't believe I need to change my, no, perfect. Now, again, for a pad, this is extremely thick. It's the exact same material here. So this has no give whatsoever. And that's why I was really stressing the importance of making sure that you have these merchandising elements away from the heating element. So here we go. Sticking the strap down, that way it stays as well. Now, in this particular case, I am not going to preheat this. Everything is off of the six by 10 platen that I need to be off or away, like I said, from the heating element. So we're just gonna go straight to applying. I did do a test run with this bag to make sure, I'm eating my hair, we wouldn't have any um, hiccups along the way. And this bag does soft soften and relax a little bit. So I don't want to have a lot of heat on it that is not needed. Now, the ultimate goal here is to make sure our logo gets adhered properly, but the likelihood that you are tossing this bag in the washer is going to be very slim. So again, operation, get the logo adhered. So metallic applies at 285, eight to 10 seconds. It's a medium, uh, medium pressure and then a cold peel. So when this is done, we'll set it down to cool. I'll take the other bag, we'll peel that, 
show you that, then peel this. Now, metallic is probably my favorite material to work with. The way it weeds is incredible. The amount of detail you can get is incredible. The thinness is excellent. So a lot of people associate metallic as heavy and crunchy, and this is very, very thin. It has a lot of excellent movement to it. Now, the one thing that I want to preface about metallic is that you can change the texture to it. And I will actually show you once we have peeled the carrier. So when you peel the carrier, you can have this nice mirrored um, finish, right? If you go back through and you hit it with the press again, then you change that texture and it becomes matte. I like to call it a brushed look. If it is on a textured bag, so say like this tote we're using, it's going to get even more texture to it. So if you're doing a series of projects or series of pieces, quantities for a customer, if you're not going to um, create that brushed look, just keep in mind and be cautious as you're applying because once you have to go back down and hit it again, you are going to change the overall look to it. Okay, healing. Again, finding the center. All right, have a sheet, pressure. Now remember earlier I found um, my pressure because we were pre-pressing for this. It's so thin, it's much thinner than that OGO bag and we are not using the pad. This is going to adjust. I'm not even getting a read at the moment, so I needed to, to crank it just a little bit. All right, so that is going to cook. I'm actually gonna stop it in just a little bit because um, it said it was going at the 15 second mark and I don't wanna cook it that long. Okay, so now that we have a completed all of our bags. Let's take a look at these and then just review the overall cost. So as you can see, this guy right here, trying, I even had just a little too much pressure with it. And getting in close. So not a lot of detail. Can't um, really even see the dimension on this because of how big this bag is and how I am set up. But I urge you, if you did not get to watch Jennifer Johnson's uh, polos and quarter zips class, go back and watch that. And you can see the dimension from one of those logos. It just shows so, so, so well. So as you can see, this is a really nice, clean look, very professional, very timeless. Now with this bag, like I said, in cost, I saw a very, very similar bag on the OGO website that was not identical to, identical to this, didn't look as elevated, and the retail cost of that was 119. That's without a logo, it's without being this size, and this look. So before you get too timid, make sure you know who your customer is on this and we will keep going down that pricing route in just a quick second. Okay, this guy is still pretty, pretty warm. So I'm gonna let it cool down and then we're gonna keep moving forward on our PowerPoint and pricing because I really want you guys to see this. Sorry, my messages <laughs> are going off and I thought I exited it. So let me just, I don't know how to- Kelly, you have uh, 15 minutes and we have a couple of questions. Sure, go for it. Okay, um, so well, let me just make sure I didn't miss any. 
Uh, so will any of the programs demo using heat transfer foil? So you're showing metallic, but it's on foil. Yep. So they are both very similar products. And if you're looking at going one over the other, my first question would be why? That, that's not a bad question. That's an excellent question if we're going to be showing it. Um, I just have more questions into your question. The second thing is the longevity with metallic. So the washability is stronger than foil and um, adhesive. So if you are concerned about losing any luster, um, go metallic because it is wash tested and dried with that 50 wash status. So um, it's also a one and done, but we're not, there will be a video up on one of the classes tomorrow that will highlight, I believe, five things you can do with um, foil and adhesive. Uh, Jenna will address it. Vicki, just, I just received some Perfect. information that Jenna will address. Love it. Uh, the second question from Shauna Ray is, uh, is metallic also a cutter material? Yes. So all of this, let's see. Is um, all of the three materials that I used are something that you can use in a craft cutter, or you can use industrial cutter, or you can also order in through services. So the um, I've actually got a piece like staged. This is metallic on a cutting mat. Okay, and then one more question. Yeah. If you don't have a smaller base, how do you use the pillow? Yeah. So if you don't have the smaller base and we were still using the 16 by 20, then you would still use that pillow like you would anything else. So if you were decorating a polo, you would still use the pull, you would still put the polo on top of whatever your platen is, stick that pillow inside. So let's just pretend everybody have a good imagination that this is our larger 16 by 20 without me putting it back in there. And then this is a pillow, not a pad. So if this is how we were going to be decorating, we would just take our item like this, and then we would stick our pad inside. And you just want to make sure that you have the best even pressure. Um, you've just really manipulated that pad where you need it to be for your logo. You don't want to have half of your logo on it and half of your logo off because then that's gonna really mess up um, the recipe for getting that, that adhesive to it here. Anything else? No, nope, thank you. Everybody said thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, so before we touch on the potential of changing the metallic, I'm gonna go show you guys that pricing. And then we can always, cause that'll take like two seconds as it, as it just falls. Okay. So as you saw earlier, we reviewed all of the details for what we were using, the material, as well as the cost and the recipe, which would be the time temperature and pressure, or you'll hear me refer to as the TTP. I think it's thinking, give me a second. Come on, computer, there we go. Okay, so for the tote breakdown, our cost was 349. The transfer that we used uh, through services, okay? So this would be you uploading your artwork, ordering um, was 696. So the total cost to make the forest green tote bag was 1045. Now, as you can see, we have a, a value, a mid tier and a premium, which is giving us a good, better, best option for decoration. You could have easily used a screen printed one color transfer at 24 pieces. You can see that would be 356. Our better option giving us a little bit of that um, different sheen, adding in a little bit of that pearl or metallic finish, that transfer 696. And of course, going premium, which would be a full color vinyl, would be $8.63. Now, as you can see, 
Um, that's a 12 by eight logo. So that is a fairly large logo that we were dealing with. Of course, if you have the ability to cut and weed in house, then these costs are going to be lower for you. The screen printed transfer is an excellent option to give you that matte look. And if you really want to go full color, then you have the ability to use that with vinyl. So for that tote bag, what could you guys turn around and sell that for with the cost being 1045? Now keep in mind, that's not including overhead, but how would you sell that bag? Because it's a fairly large bag with a zipper. For me, I think you could easily go to 19 to $22, depending, excuse me, 18 to $22, depending on who your market is and where, uh, or what your demographics are. If you're selling directly, then with something that size, it definitely warrants a higher price. All right, the commuter bag. So I told you the retail price on OGO's website, well, I'm checking my time, guys, was uh, $119, not decorated and not even the same style. So it cost, it's $45. We did a, a dimensional vinyl, which would be CAD cut soft foam at $226, giving you a total cost of $47.26. Even if you were to offer this as an $80 bag, your profit is almost double and, or excuse me, your margin is almost double and you are now under the cost of what it would be to purchase that bag from OGO's website. So start thinking about what you could offer or what you could sell that bag out um, given you have the customer. The logo was a um, not a six by six. I'll make sure I get that adjusted um, in the PDF. It was actually a one and a half by five. Uh, the pricing is correct though. So a flat vinyl, which would be something like Ultra Weed Premium Plus, um, $1.74. And then if you really want to add in um, something really unique and really take this to another level going best on best, would be doing something like a leather patch or another emblem. Okay, last but not least is the retail bag. It was 18 and we went with a good decoration method, which was the CAD cut metallic at $2.18, giving us the total cost of $20.18. Now the next option, which would be the better category would be a full color printable glitter. The reason I chose the glitter is because this is a bag that you could either do initials, you could do a really fun saying. Um, this was a five by four logo, but that full color printable glitter gives you not only a special effect with the glitter, but it also gives you that full color capability. Um, that was $2.32. And then best would be creating a liquid embroidery using our flex style. So the idea for something like this would be using um, or creating like that OGO emblem that was at the top of the bag. Maybe it's not that same size, but you can still make a really, really wow factor, especially if you're using it for certain branding purposes. Now you can see it was $12.95 for a five by four flex style logo. So I went ahead and priced it at a three by three as well, which would be $7.53. So for this bag being $20.18, what could you turn around and charge your customer for? I think if you are under that $40 price point, you definitely knocked it out of the park. Um, from a retail perspective, um, it's definitely dual be doable between 35 and 45 in my personal opinion with my demographics. All right, guys, that's it in terms of a presentation. So let's just spend the last, it looks like five minutes going over any questions. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. I wanted to make sure. 
Okay, I saw a hand up on here and I wanted to make sure there wasn't anything in the comments. Kelly, there is a question from Sherry. Sure. She wants to know, would the price of 18 to $22 need to include tax or would you charge that price plus tax? You know, if you are going direct to consumer, then they would be paying tax. If you're going um, business to business and then they're going to consumer, that I am not 100% sure on because that comes into play with like your tax accountant. Um, and I don't necessarily know that direct answer. But if you were a business and you said, hey, I'm going to sell on Etsy and the customer is going to buy, then there should be um, a calculation in there that determines whether or not they're paying tax. So that you would have to find. You can see that I need to go back over this as it has kind of hardened. I went too hard on my pressure. But for this bag, if you had somebody's initial and this cost you $20 and you were turning around and selling it for 30, maybe you want a $10 markup, then just to make sure that whatever your calculation is in your uh, like website or where you sell that that's doing it for you. That, that's how it should be that I'm aware of. Anything else? <laughs> that's all the questions for right now. Woo woo. Okay. So since we have just a minute, I'm going to quickly just uh, tack this. That way you can see the, the finish change. So I'm trying to get as close as possible. Okay, so it's got a little bit of a mirrored shiny look. And then again, just gonna thread this. Now we don't need to go the full time. All we have to do is just lightly put that um, press on top. So I'm just going to do it for a couple of seconds. And then now you have created more of a brushed or flat look. So it just adds in a little bit more texture. This is a really, really smooth surface. Um, on a t-shirt, you would really, really see this take into effect. So again, this is what this bag looks like. Kelly, one final question just came in. Go for it. Uh, to offer the bags, should you keep them in stock with the anticipation of selling them? I guess the, then she follows up with what advice do you have on keeping stock on hand? That's from Mary. So my first question is, what is your business? Um, are you selling at, in quantities or are you selling because somebody is coming to you and they want X bag with X logo? I'm waiting for an answer. <laughs> okay. So, um, we'll see if she does personalize, not in quantity. Okay. So. I would probably say yes, because if something goes out of stock, which we've talked about on other other classes, that gives you the ability to still print on demand. And then you could also turn around and put in there um, limited, uh, limited pieces or uh, give a longer turn time for production. That way you... Um, over under promise over <laughs> what's over deliver for me <laughs> over deliver <laughs> thank you um so if you're saying it could take two weeks to deliver right now and you have one in stock then that is making that customer really really happy and excited seeing it earlier but then you have prepped yourself for any type of crazy demand and something going out of stock um that tote specifically is from wholesale boutique i know that they will get new products in and then sneeze and all of the products are sold out. So in that particular case, I would probably stock on hand. If you're unsure, start with five pieces. If you blow through that, double it up because you can always change the logo. Um, that way you have blank goods without producing and then sitting on something that may never move again. Uh, I would start small if you're not sure 
what your customers um, will think, or if you can do feelers out there, do a feeler. Wholesale Boutique, I think you can also order one in. So uh, test, take pictures, and then go from there. Mary said thanks. That made sense to her. Yay. Okay, guys, um, it is 4.50. Well, my time, I'm in Kansas. So if you have any other questions, drop them in the comments and we can kind of monitor that for just a couple more minutes and then exit here and go to the next class. And we go for what? How many more classes do we have? I should have checked that tonight. Do you know, Sean? I should know this. I think we have at least. I, don't, I know we go till I think nine's the last one. Yeah, I know. It's like my, I think I'm the last one. I think I'm at eight. So, all right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Shauna, thank you so much for um, narrating and helping and commentating as well. So, bye, guys.